call this meeting of the Darien Board of Education Finance Committee um, to order. It is Friday, July 30th at 8.30 a.m. Thank you for joining us. Um, the purpose of today is to just run through um, the changes in the budget as we proceed into next budget season and to understand what the changes to the chart of the accounts are for those of us who follow the budget closely. So I will hand it off to Mr. Rudel. Or Dr. Abbott. Yeah, yeah, thank, yeah, yeah, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. And um, as was highlighted, I think, in the, in the May Statement of Accounts, uh, a few uh, organizational codes, uh, uh, object code was broken into a few organizational codes um, as sort of aligns to some of the practices that we're trying to do moving forward. Um, that sort of helps with our state report and it helps with our, our departments. Um, I would say in the May, in the May uh, statement of accounts. Um, I would recognize that I probably should have flagged it even more, um, even though the, the breakouts were in the actual accounts. I've, just to be very explicit, that, um, but with that, uh, it aligns to what uh, I think the board understands we're doing. And uh, we tried to put together a memorandum that sort of explains that, and Mr. Riddle will, will walk us through it. Sure. Um, so as we talked about uh, previously, uh, there were some changes to the chart of accounts that we wanted to make. Uh, to better utilize MUNIS, which is the, the district's accounting system. Uh, so MUNIS consists of what's called organizational codes and object codes. Object codes are the budget codes that you see in the financial report, and organizational codes allow you to segregate out those objects into uh, essentially sub-detail. Uh, so for a school district, an organizational code could be a subject matter, whether it's math, science, or language, et cetera. Um, so not all organizational codes were set up, so we did work to set up a lot of organizational codes. Uh, this was also requested from a number of administrators um, to allow them to track their expenditures a little bit more carefully rather than having them all lumped into one object code. Uh, so we did break out the changes that we made in the memo, and we'll go through that now. Uh, the first was curriculum supervision within the broad category of salaries. Uh, so previously, cur curriculum supervision in RC1 contained department chairs for math, English, social studies, world language, uh, the tech ed coordinator, the library coordinator, and student study team. And then in RC3 previously, it contained just the department chair for science, the art coordinator, curriculum monitors, and the SST coordinator. So we did break out the department chairs into a new account. Uh, the department chairs are allocated 80-20 between the high school and the middle school, so that there is a portion of all department chairs uh, by subject matter within each, um, within each RC, and they all have, all have an organizational code based on their subject area, whether it's world language, again, math, social studies, et cetera. Uh, curriculum supervision uh, would contain anything that's considered a DEA um, stipend, such as the tech ed coordination, uh, the library coordinator, however, that was eliminated in the fiscal 22 budget, or the student study team coordinator. Uh, the curriculum monitors in RC3, and uh, the SST coordination and art coordinator in RC3. Uh, this one was previously done at the beginning of last year, but uh, teacher aides were uh, segregated out between teacher aides and campus monitors. So campus monitors are part of the power union, so we have a campus monitor account, which affects RC 1, 3, 5, 7, uh, 8, 9, and 10, so the schools, and then the teacher aid account uh, for all the other uh, teacher aides. Uh, as I mentioned before, campus monitors is the new account. Um, so we made assistant directors a uniform object code. Uh, 1122, uh, so you have all non-certified assistant directors in the district and object 11022. So that includes the assistant director of athletics, the custodial and maintenance supervisor, the HR coordinator, and the assistant director of finance. Um, one of the items that has come up at least in the last two budget cycles is unified sports. So previously unified sports was a portion in the stipend account in RC11 for those who oversee it, and then in homebound tutoring, some of the sub uh, the support fun functions of uh, unified sports. We did create a unified sports object code 101012, and that will have both uh, the stipends for overseeing it as well as the, um, the individual hourly payments that go along with unified sports in that account, so you can see the total cost of unified sports. Um, secretaries throughout the district were split between objects 1113, 21501, and 41005. Uh, we've segregated into two object of codes, the first one being 11032. That would be for any unaffiliated secretary or executive assistant. So that would be in RC 12, 16, 19, and 20. And then for those secretaries who are part of the union, object 21501, which is RC 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16, 18, 23, and 24. Um, we previously had an account called Bursar Administrative Assistant 1113. This previously 
past years included uh, employees who are not bursars, such as the HR coordinator, the director of human resources, and the superintendent and executive assistant. Uh, so those have been moved into different object code with the bursar now reflecting only an RC1 for who is actually the bursar. Uh, we did create a uniform, uniform um, non-certified director account 11031. This includes the director of technology, director of facilities, and director of nursing. Uh, the Director of Human Resources was taken out, as I mentioned, from the bursar account into Object 1115, so it aligns with any cabinet-level non-certified director, which would include the Director of Human Resources in RC18 and then Director of Finance in RC20. Uh, team mentor stipends, uh, this was a new object, 10150. Uh, this was created this year due to a reduction in the state grant for reimbursement. Um, previously. Um, when the grant was insufficient to cover expenses, it was charged to the substitutes for professional development. Um, so typically in the past, many years ago, uh, the team program is run, the state reimburses those costs. Uh, that grant has been cut over the number of years. Uh, so to isolate that account, it is in that object 10150. Um, if you recall, shortly after the budget process, the curriculum department went through a reorganization, so we did create an object account 21201. This is for the director of elementary education, which would take effect in fiscal year 22. And it aligns with all certified directors, such as the director of guidance, athletics, music, instructional technology, and the director of ELP. Similar with that curriculum reorganization, the curriculum coordinator account object 1912006 was created due to the restructuring of the curriculum office. Uh, curriculum supervision um, <clears throat> was added in RC19 for 21220, and that is the elementary world language coordination stipend. That was previously coded to substitutes professional development. Um, done previously, but we wanted to flag the behavioral analyst in RC24 was previously coded to special classroom teachers for a number of years. Uh, since this is not a certified teacher, we did move that into object 21409. Physical therapist, similar, similarly, was in special classroom teacher. We did create its own object earlier in the year for 21410, and that is for the physical therapist. And then highlighted in the budget from this past year, uh, we did delineate building subs from daily subs, and that's object 21318. As I mentioned earlier, we did create a number of organizational codes, which then roll up into uh, an object. So some of the changes for organizational codes include in textbooks. So textbooks has been object 22002. It now has sub detail for English, world language, math, science, social studies, et cetera. Science supplies was previously object 2409. Uh, it has an organizational code dedicated to science while rolling up into object 2411, general teaching supplies. Um, and then general teaching supplies 2411, we did break out organizational codes so we can track for English, for language, science, math, social studies, uh, PE, music, art, technology, tech ed, summer school, special education, and ELP. Uh, previously, dues, fees, and memberships had three individual object codes throughout the chart of accounts, 25026, 1313, and 13016. So it's one uniform object account, 25026. Uh, software had previously two different object codes, 2519 and 1335. That is now a uniform object code of 1335. Looking at the broad category of property services, uh, repairs and services previously had multiple object codes, 72038, 72041, and 72044. So it has a uniform object code now of 72041 with organizational codes by subject areas such as science, facility, music, art, technology, health, library, tech ed, and special education. And then equipment uh, has organizational codes created within it for office equipment, English, math, science, social studies, classroom equipment, physical education, music, art, and library. Uh, so there was a question about historical information. We have made the history transfers which were posted to period 13 for fiscal 18, 19, and 20. Uh, so that the public and the various boards can see the trends over time. Uh, so that will be reflected in the June final uh, financial report. Questions? Mr. Sini. Rich, what does period 13 mean? I just so you have 12 months in the year. Okay. So anything that happens with essentially post-audit is called period 13. Got it. Um, so obviously you can't change the final numbers from the audit, but you also don't want to change what happened in the individual months. So you select what's called period 13 to have those adjustments. Learn something new in accounting every day. <laughs> I know there are 13 months. Um, okay, so, so just to be clear, period 13 or this new adjustment statement, as I would probably call it, is going to go back three fiscal years? Correct. 
and so as you stated we'll be able to see the pro form. so whether it's the budget for fiscal 23 that'll come up or the financial reports for fiscal 22 or the financial reports for fiscal 21 you'll see the various three years kind of otherwise known as pro forma yep okay great thank you mrs parent Thanks, Rich. So a lot of this makes a lot of good sense to me. Do you think that there are other things, you know, in our next budget cycle, do you think there's other more that you will break out? Or? I, mean, I think this is probably it, unless there are positions that are created um, that call for a breakout. Um, but that, obviously, we won't know until the 23 budget happens. Mrs. Ritchie, did I see your hand? Oh, you're on mute. I think you're still muted. I'm sorry. You can send in a question if you have it. I know you're joining us um, from afar. You're shown unmuted now, Deb. So try try once more. No. It's okay. So. Um, Thank you for this. I do think we have people who follow the budget closely, so when things are moved and new, um, for them to kind of go to one place and say, this is what's changed. Um, what we may want to consider, and Mr. Chairman, I'll leave it to you and the superintendent, is um, once we approve a budget in June, as we move forward, if there's kind of new codes or new lines that we open up, just doing something like this each time to highlight it so the board is aware and aware of the organizational changes because many people kind of know where to look for something and if there's a better or more efficient way to do it, that's fine. Just a matter of then really knowing where it looked in a budget with thousands of lines. Um, but I think this, this will be very helpful. I'm sure RTM F and B will be looking at this and that will help them in them and then I think if it helps us organizationally going forward that's fine my only um, my only real concern is structurally how we do that and again mr. chairman and dr. Adley I'll, I would leave that to you um, opening up new codes in Munis is the financial department having new lines in a budget that was a post approval I just want to make sure the board is doing its due diligence whatever that may be so I will leave it to you guys to sort that out but once we have an appropriation, once we have approved lines, I just want to make sure everyone can follow where we are and if new lines open up, why and when we did that. So this memo goes a long way in doing that. Thank you. Um, yes. Yeah. Deb just texted me. Um, similar to what you were just saying, she said, can this be presented at the next board meeting and at the budget presentation in January so that everybody that sure. is involved is We'll also put it on the website. For yeah. Okay. I think that's actually a good point. It might be very helpful just to next budget season reissue this memo um, just as a matter of a point of interest to people following through the budget is this um, something that the board needs to approve or is this just operational and is i think that's where um the, the i think it is done at this yes. point and the financials have been voted on at this point but i would suggest strongly that the superintendent and the board chair make sure that the process is is what it should be so I think we are fine at the moment. Going forward, we should just get very clear on how this occurs. Can you just clarify what you mean by is what it should be? Well, I, I mean, I think the financials have all been voted on by the board and they've been presented right. so that they are approved and we are in yeah. that fine spot. I do think that it's such a complicated budget in some ways that if you open new lines, like you said, Dr. Yes, Adley, yes. highlighting them so the board right, is aware yeah, yep. is a good idea. Yep. And then for the chair and the super maybe to take a look at when we create these new lines that are not just munis organizational codes. Sure. Um, what's the due diligence of the board? And I would leave that to you two to sort out. It may be that this is the exact process and we're just clearing it. You may choose a different process, but I will leave it to you two to sort that out and present back to the board. Uh, let me, can I ask? Sure, Mr. If, if, it, if it worked this way, if it's fine this way, I think I heard the words, why would we have to change the process? Um, well, we're having a meeting, a special meeting now, to go over this. We probably could avoid that when we're having the special meeting, because when I went through, I noticed significant numbers of organizational codes that had changed. And so we met again to make it clear, but if there are new lines where this is going forward, it's either a matter of flagging it so that the board knows so we don't have to call special meetings, 
or making sure there's board discussion if there's a question on what a new line is. And I think if we highlight those, then at a finance committee, we can have a really good, robust conversation. We don't have to call special meetings. Just trying to save people time. Right. So it, bottom line, issuing a memo when you when you make a change is right. what you're yeah, requesting. Yeah, that's fine. If okay. that's Got it. Um, oh, Rich, just to confirm, the bottom line budget numbers, nothing's changed, right? Correct. You're just taking it from one account. Yeah, so that's really where the crux of this came up. There are transfers, or, or, or budget adjustments, sorry. We're using yes, our please, new words, please. budget budget adjustments, made within broad categories by the superintendent. Uh, um, However, there were new lines. So they were transferred to brand new lines that unless you were doing what I was doing going through that you might not have recognized. So this memo, I think, helps everyone recognize it. Absolutely. So if we issue it on a regular basis, should that happen again, and have the questions and we don't need to do this at the end of the year. Uh, just another follow-up, Rich. How much was this was driven by the state, you think? I mean, if you can ballpark. Uh, so the because state does have something called a unified chart of accounts. Um, it's not a requirement, but all the state reporting that we have to do essentially follows it. It's a good idea. So it, it allows us to do a state report that's due actually September 1st um, in a much more efficient manner. Um, it's a much more of a data extract rather than starting to manipulate and massage different object codes. Thank and you. to be clear, we've always met our September 1 so history. If, the board has always met its September um, 1 If you don't meet it, you actually get fined as a board. Yeah. Um, $1,000 a day for failing to meet um, that requirement for the state. So the, the district has always met that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it's yeah. easier now. Correct. Because you're matching up better with the Correct. state. Okay, thank you. Yeah. But we have not incurred any fines, you have not. luckily. <laughs> um, any other questions? The only other observation I, I would make um, is that you asked a question would it be anything future probably not but the only thing that would ever be on the on even a radar would be if we ever wanted to come back and say do we want to do anything with things like art and technology and stuff but that would that would change the budget book the rc so we're we're, we're not doing that so, so there's no intention to do that right yeah, now so dr adley you're actually your question your point and sarah Mrs. Perrin's question is exactly what I'm highlighting. When we open something new in the budget, when we vote on a new yeah. line in the budget, we all expect to see it in the budget. Right. The questions came up, and this is why this memo is helpful in clarifying. All of a sudden, when there were new, new lines because of new codes and organizationally in the budget, the question is, where did that come from? This memo explains where and why it came from. So I think that goes far. So if you were to add a new position in the budget, next cycle, we would see that in the budget we approved. What started happening as we were going through is I started asking questions in May. I don't recognize this line. It wasn't here before. And Mr. Rudel's memo explains where that came from. And I think if it helps organizationally, that's fine. Sure. Um, and if it helps us get the chart of accounts, that's fine. But now we have all the information in one place, which is helpful. Okay. Any other questions? Can I entertain a motion to adjourn? Public comment. Uh, yeah. public oh, public, public comment. comment. Sorry. Good morning. If you would like to speak during public comment, please click the participants icon on the bottom of your Zoom screen. Next, click the raised hand icon. You will notice a blue hand icon appear in the upper corner of your screen where your face, name, or number appears. When it is your turn to speak, the facilitator will identify you and state that it is your turn for public comment. Once recognized and unmuted, please state your name and address. You will have up to three minutes to comment. There are no raised hands at this time. Thank you. With that, may I entertain a motion to adjourn? Mr. Sini, Mrs. Parent, all in favor. That is unanimous. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a nice Thanks weekend, much. everybody. Thank you.